Hello my friends and welcome to episode 5 of the Rangers Revolution. Today we take on Celtic in the Old Firm Derby. So it's not going to be a one game episode. I asked last episode thoughts on two games per episode. Haven't got that up yet because I'm recording this on Thursday night. And basically, well that doesn't go out till Friday. This will be out Saturday. Other thing I want to ask you is... Thoughts on me going to a two a video every two days, so rather than every day, I'm going to drop to every two days. What is your thoughts on that? Uh, would that be better for you guys? I'm just struggling to maintain this schedule, to be honest, right now. Just about getting through it, but I'm not getting any motorsport manager up, so if I can put a little bit of thought onto that as well, because I really enjoy doing that series. Uh, so since the last episode, we played Everton. In the last episode, we lost 7-4 in aggregate with a win against Hearts in between. Where they drew 1-0 with Ross County. Alex Schalke getting a late equaliser to a Jamie Baronis opener. We then beat Dundee 4-2. Morelos, Candias, Baronis and a Jack Henry on goal. Jack Henry's on goal feels a bit hard on Dapo and Boudet, who I'm pretty certain scored it. Nevertheless, Sophine Musa came off the bench for them and scored two. Morelos picked up an injury in this game though, which was bad news. We then played Park Fissel, Ryan Hardy and Jack Adamson on the score sheet, giving some young lads a game and they paid me back. Hardy in for the injured Morelos, Jack Adamson in just for a bit of rotation. Give the lad a chance, I thought. And he rewarded it, he'd played a 9.0 in a youth game just before it, so I thought, why not give him a chance? Ryan Edwards getting a late consolation for them. Then we lost 1-0 to Ross County in the Betfred Cup quarter-final. We were resting players basically for the Celtic game. Alex Schalke scored a penalty. It was a completely undeserved victory for them. In all honesty, we battered them and battered them. And then they got a penalty scored and we just couldn't blow the door of the house down. Transfer-wise, there is some information. We have signed Donald Love on loan from Sunderland. He is Scottish, under the age of 24. So it would meet my signing requirements. I've just brought him in on loan. But it does bring me to a point of what am I allowed to do on loan signings? For example, if Meza Ezo comes available on loan like he did in the PSG save that I did and he was interested in coming and I could afford him, would it be worthwhile taking him? Would that be in your interpretation of the rules? I never set any rules for loans. And I never thought to discuss it until I thought, well, let's try getting in some loans. So, Donald Love does meet those requirements, because I made sure before I brought anyone in to ask you guys. Um, the other one that I did have is a very, very close deal. Go and check out my Twitter for it. Um, Alan McGregor, homegrown at Rangers, of course. So, again, meets the requirements on that basis. The problem with that was we got a bit accepted from Paul. Contract negotiations broke down. His agent came back. We're willing to renegotiate. Went, okay, no worries. Put in a bed. Got accepted. 11 minutes later, the deal got cancelled because Hull were under a transfer embargo. This was on deadline day. Who goes into a transfer embargo because of a takeover on deadline day? Any sane chairman in the world is just going to tell the guy, listen, come back tomorrow. Let us get through deadline day. Let us get any ins and outs that need to happen done to sort us for this season. Nope. At 9am, on well, 9.54am on deadline day, Hull going to a transfer in Borgo 11 minutes after accepting an offer for a fringe player. Billy Bonkers, if you ask me. On the outs, um, David Bates is aware of loan to Rafe, Lewis Mayo to Albion Rovers, Zach Run to Brecon, Willie Henderson, one of the lads that I brought in, away on loan to Peter Head, and Josh Windass, I wasn't interested in loaning him out. Sunderland came in with an offer of some money up front. I think it was about 14k. I said, give me 30k and all his wages. And we came to a deal. He's going to go get some game time. Hopefully, I'm actually kind of hoping his value is going to go up while he's playing in the championship. He's only as a rotation player for them, so I'm not expecting him to get a huge amount of game time. But the league is loaded, so hopefully he'll go down there, get some games, increase his value, and I can sell him on next season and bring in other people or promote someone. In the last game, Serge Attacchi got his debut in that role. Played absolutely horrific. Two, 6.2, as you can see. Um... I'm full strength for this game. Lee Wallace has returned from injury. Morelos returned in time for the Ross County game, but I decided let's save him for the Celtic game. 
uh, Carlos Pena, maybe a bit worried on fitness with Pena and Bruno Alves, but we'll work that one out. Rossa turns in there, preferring him to Ryan Jack. He gets a, le a few less cards, he's got more potential, and he's similar in current ability. Candace has got that winger slot locked down. Walker at left and inside forward even is doing very well as well. Uh, with Jamie Baronis actually putting in a fight, as you can see, he's now got AML there because he has now accomplished in this position. See his stats going up as well. He's doing absolutely fantastic. Pro praised his training. And if we go to relationships, Brendan Roberts, Rogers, Craig Levine, and Neil Lennon hate us. But as you can see, Jamie Baronis, one of the top acquaintances, we're close to Kenny Miller. I'm very close to a man called James Finlay, who's an agent for a number of our players. So we're getting there with the squad. We're starting to get, get in contact with them. Nico Cranshaw, I've accepted numerous bids for, and he keeps rejecting them. I um, don't know why. It's always bids from the States, so that might be why it might not be interested in going back to the United States. But they're all MLS clubs, so it's actually a step up from where he was with New York Cosmos. Uh, they obviously play in the league below. It's old for them day anyway, so I'm going to say to home as well. So let's give our fans something to cheer about. I'm going to go passionate. There's a lot to come from you, and I believe you have what it takes. Cardozo looks stressed. Probably not a big game player. Maybe should have checked that out and played Aiden Wilson. If that is the case, I will need to check that after the match. Um, we also have uh, our corner tactics now sorted out. Not scored from a corner yet though since, uh, but we've not conceded yet either. Touch wood. My computer desk is made out of wood, so I can do that. Um, that we don't in this game. As Paddy Roberts is just burning through everyone. But his cross turns into more of a shot. Uh, Bruno Alves and Lee Wallace both getting absolutely done by the tricky Englishman. Jamie Walker launches that forward. He's going to find Morelos there. He's got support coming forward and Pena. Can he find his man again? Morelos into Jordan Rossitar. Oh, De Vries saves that. A little bit more into the corner. Probably falls to the one man on the pitch who I said it. Didn't want that to fall to his. Jamie Walker comes in there. Tacking that ball. Putting it over the bar. Ah. Uh, I feel like we should have been 1-0 up there. Candace with the corner again. Armstrong clears out to Rossitar. Brings it into the box. Another effort on target for Rossiter though. But again, it's another team one. We've started this game very, very brightly. And they've got some good players, of course. Robert Sinclair, Dembele, very strong front three. Very strong midfield three for this level as well. As Lee Wallace dragged out of position by Paddy Roberts there. And Lustig on the overlap. Getting a ball in. Fodderingham. Don't think it was going in, but Fodderingham taking no chances. And he doesn't know if anyone's behind him as well. So that's always handy. Paddy Roberts whips this one in. Bruno Alves away. Finds his countryman, Candias. Plays it forward to Morelos. He's got a, an army of green and white around him, though. And the highlight ends. Bit strange that those highlights come in. Lee Wallace takes it off Paddy Roberts this time. His clearance doesn't meet Morelos, though. Armstrong to Brown. Games all meant to play more direct football. I feel like we're playing quite direct football right now, as it is. Oh, that's an awful pass from Candias. And Musa Dembele... Has found Scott Sinclair. He doesn't miss them. We started this game so well. And Candace has made one awful pass. <sighs> and we're 1-0 down. He's such a key influential figure going forward as well. Danny Candace. For this team. <sighs> ah, yeah, son. The issue is, is we've got nobody that's really ready that's going to come into that role. So I need to have a look. We also have signed a lad from Rafe on a pre sort of want to call it a pre-contract deal. He had a youth contract with 68k to trigger it. And I believe he had four-star potential and I was looking at him and I was like, we can make this work. Let's go with firing him up. So big response there from the lads as Morelos kicks off. Lee Wallace to Bruno Alves, Jamie Walker. Try to think how we can even change this if Candace doesn't up his game. Right, we're five minutes in and he's getting worse with his rating, so let's demand some more from him. Anyone else that we're going to demand more from? Lee Wallace will do that and Jamie Walker. Jamie Walker's the only way I can see us getting Candace off the pitch without really having to do anything too drastic. Because right now Candace feels like playing with 10 men as Rossiter and 
Lee Wallace clat with each other and it means that a ball goes over both of them. Ah, individual errors boys, individual errors, we're playing well as a team but these little individual errors are going to cost us against a team that's strong. Swept across to Candias. He's danced past one. It's a decent ball in from the Portuguese man. Alfredo Morelos. Beautiful ball. Candias, we demanded more from him. He goes past one. The second comes in. He gets it away. And a brilliant finish from Morelos on the volley. Sinclair with the corner. Away by Cardozo. Finds Pena. It's away up to Morelos. She's played it out to Candias. Candias, again, decent effort getting the ball and doesn't beat the first man on this occasion. He was forced to turn away to protect the ball. Maybe not the best time to whip it in. And it goes Jamie Walker again going to attack that. Doesn't get there. Pena. And it Candias again. He's got space this time to find the ball in. But he plays it into the army of green and white that's in the middle rather than the two blue lads who are just standing off them. I'm trying to see anything we can change here. Tactical wise, who have we got on the bench? We've got Cranshaw. He might actually be our option here for Carlos Pena. He can come in there quite well. We've got Baronis, we've got Aidan Wilson, we've got Ryan Jack, Herrera and John. Not really big game changers on the bench right now. Might have been a time to have had a Kenny Miller on the bench. He's not played a game yet, but he is very friendly with me. The only conversation I've had with him is to tell him that he would become a good manager. It's something that's said about him quite consistently in real life. But he likes me for that, apparently. Despite the fact he's not played a single game under my management. Dorans to Rossiter. Plays it out to Lee Wallace. Can he find a decent ball in here? Gives himself that half yard, but Luce greets it and intercepts. Cleared away only as far as Tavernier. Candace again going out wide. And again, it's a... I was going to say it's a poor angle for a cross, but it finds Jamie Walker at the back post. And what do you know? We're 2-1 up. Puts us top of the league. I should have shown you the league table before the start of this game. I do apologise for that. We will do that right now. I'll just pause the game quickly to flick this up. So as you see, only lost one. Celtic haven't lost any. Uh, sorry, we've lost none. Celtic have lost none. We were 5-1-0 going into this game. Celtic beating us on goal difference by a goal. Which got Brendan Rodgers manager of the month. Which is rather frustrating was that one goal difference. Anything else we can change here? I'm going to... I kind of want to bring off Dorans, but I don't really want to bring on anyone on at the same time for him. Mm. Interesting predicament. Bring on Jamie Baronis. Can you go there? Nope, you're going to be better here. I'm going to click confirm that. So Jamie Baronis coming in in central midfield, a position he's not played for me yet. A little bit nervous by that. But again, it's big game time for the youngster. Is We've got a highlight here. I'm assuming this is not live. Apparently it is. As this corner is not getting taken, Celtic wasting time while 1 0 down. I assume something's going on in the background that is not showing me. Game. Game. Hello. Eventually, the free the corner is taken. Bruno Alves launches it clear. We waited all that time for that one big clearance from Bruno Alves. We're going to make some more tactical changes. We're going to bring on Aidan Wilson for Bruno Alves. Bruno Alves starting to struggle for fitness. The only reason why I'm making this change. Don't really want to do it. We're going to go to normal counter. We'll stay in control actually. No, we'll go counter. Um, and Fodderingham, bring it to you. Add instruction over the top. Slow the pace down. Uh, Distribute to position. No, we'll go there. Right, there we go. Uh, so that's our last change. Rosa are apparently on 99% fitness. That's clearly glitched. In fact, since we went into Fodderingham's thing there, they've all gone right up. That's clearly not correct. Uh, that must have been our pre-match fitness. So we look to waste a bit of time. Kieran Tierney to beat on. Always oh, Done his man there with a great pass, and that's a decent effort from Rage from Nitchum. Just over the target. We think we've maybe edged this game ever so slightly, but Celtic definitely looking like they're up for it in the last little while. We're going to go contain. 
uh, waste time, go route one, clear to the flanks, stop looking for the overlap, be more just one, stick to positions. Um, can we go any narrow? There we go. Now will do because narrow is always good when you're trying to see out a game. Uh, full back, defend. Full back, defend. Uh, we'll put you on the inside forward support. You're always already on support. We'll put you onto support as well. Ball winning midfielder, defend please. Uh, can't put you onto that. So let's make you a deep line playmaker on support. We'll just go a bit more defensive for these last few minutes. I was about to say not big injury time please, but we've got five minutes of it. Fodderingham takes a goal kick. It's to Simonovic. Oh, it's a poor pass from Simonovic. But it's fallen kindly for that tackle. Rossiter with a big clearance. Bastians. Sinclair. Lee Griffiths. Bastians again. Beaton. Lee Griffiths. Oh. We just couldn't get the ball off them. Uh, I clicked Jamie Baronis by accident there. Uh, support. Attack. Uh, no, that's not what I want you to do. I want you on attack. Uh, support. Support. Uh, and let's go back to control. Mixed. Retain possession. Pass into space. Exploit the middle. Work the ball in the box. Look for overlap. Lower tempo. Fairly wide. Be more expensive room from positions. Ah, just knew it when the guy plays a short pass. It comes to our guy, and it struggles. So it was two goals difference that they had advantage on us. Fodderingham launches forward. Lustig. It's got to be full time now. At two all. I think we edged it. To be honest, an absolute thunderbolt from Lee Griffiths and a mistake from Candace. Candace did respond to us asking uh, us more of him turned up after that, got two assists after that incident or after we continued him on so he was a mistake for the first goal can't fault the rest of his performance getting a bit of a brief report on uh, Baronis, I gave you that just before this game so he's got decent acceleration and pace Finishing, dribbling going up, first touch going up. Flair is the only thing I'd be worried about is an inside forward, but you know he's getting there. Maintain our unbeaten record, so let's have a look at the league table as it finishes. So we're behind Celtic on goal difference by two goals. Aberdeen, if they win their game in hand, will join us on that. In fact, they will go ahead of us. So Johnston also have a game in hand, would go a point behind us. What a start to the season that could be. Four teams within a point. At the start of the season, uh, th yep, they're playing Hamilton and Aberdeen are playing Motherwell. So you'd expect them both to win those games. So you're looking at four teams inside a point if they both win. What a start to the season that could be, and what a setup it gives for the rest of this the rest of the season going forward. And talking of that, we will come back uh, for the Aberdeen game. At the end of next month. It's only in three games time actually. So it's quite a long time. For such few games. And. What I actually do is at Johnston and Aberdeen. I was looking at Aberdeen and Hearts. Where's Hearts in the league. They're six. A little bit off the pace. But not maybe that much. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll come back on Monday. With a double header. The Aberdeen game is a guarantee. And. It will either be the Hearts game or the St Johnston game, depending on the league table. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll hopefully catch you all next time.